Well, back now to Sunday House Call and bringing new meaning to the old saying, you are what you eat. Researchers find a link between the bacteria in your gut and the way we feel. Dr. Siegel, this is scaring me. What's in there? Well, first of all, you find out, this is, there's research coming out of Texas Tech, and there's six pounds of bacteria in your body. This is not for the squeamish, this segment. Six pounds. You have two million bacteria. Uh, you have 23,000 genes, Eric, uh -huh. in your body. But you have two million bacterial genes in your body. That means that we've got more bacteria in our body governing how we are and what we do than we have our own regular genes in our cells, DNA. And you know what that means? The bacteria in your intestines are making things like serotonin and dopamine, happy hormones that w I thought were just made in the brain. So the gut itself, the intestine itself, is helping to govern your behavior, the bacteria. If you get your bacteria pissed off or if they get infected, or if you are under high stress, research is starting to show that it impacts mood, it can lead to more depression, and it causes less immune response. Well, how, how do I get my bacteria? How do I anger my bacteria? And how do I get more of those with happy an, bacteria than the other ones? With an incoming infection, that was one way to do it. Mm -hmm. Not sleeping, not eating, getting angry. The bad bacteria tends to predominate when you're not doing well, when you're under stress. The right. good bacteria makes happy hormones. David is like uh, shaking your head. No, what I'm saying is that there's a whole ecosystem uh -huh. of people living inside you. So you're basically, you know, an announcement is that you're 90% bacteria, 10% human. That's what we want people right. to know. <laughs> and you have trillions of these bacteria sitting over there that are active. What we're finding out, and scientists are looking at research, is what you put in your mouth, whether it's high fat, animal protein, carbohydrates, all of those get break down by these bacteria, and the ratio of good bacteria versus bad bacteria determines how healthy you're going to be. So if you're the type that would eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, if you drink and exercise, all the things that we talk about, the ratio is going to be great. So you are less prone to have Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel disease. Now we're finding out that those bacteria are one of the reasons why we have diabetes and obesity in this country. So. You know, this is the first time that we see more about the psyche and the psychology of what these bacteria are able to do. So they're secreting dopamine, serotonin, and GABA hormones, which is unbelievable because that means that if you're not eating healthy food, more hot dogs and processed food, etc., can lead to depression. We're going to be talking about Crohn's disease in a moment. That's going to be one of our other subjects. But I would just want to say that the food manufacturers are largely to blame for the reason why many of us are sick, because the food that you are putting in your system with all the preservatives are making you sick. That's one thing. That's part of something else I want to point out, which is your bacteria in the stomach, not only are they regulating your mood, but they're helping you digest your food. And you know what? When we eat that processed food, all those chemicals wears down our good bacteria, to yep. your point. But you know what else we're doing wrong? We're giving too many antibiotics. When we give antibiotics to little Wipes kids, the they yeah. wipe out yeah. the good bacteria, and then you get obese, and then you get diabetes, and then you get heart disease. All of this is part of what we're doing wrong by over-treating. Well, yeah, and you know, you know what's, what's very big is probiotics. What about that? Does well, that, that really help? That, that that's that's more, become huge, that, taking huge. probiotics. That adds more good bacteria. But you know what's interesting, Mark? What's interesting about this study is they took actually the bad bacteria from obese patients mm -hmm. and put them in the mice. And guess what happened to the mice? They also became obese. So now that we're diabetes. starting Right. Or it ended up from diabetic patients to mice. Mm -hmm. So we are understanding that, you know, just treating the actual symptoms is not the way to go. Go to the root of the problem. And we're getting into that ecosystem. So you don't want to piss off your Mark, bacteria quick, yet. Quick, <laughs> I, want to, I don't want to leave the probiotic issue on the table. Should people take probiotics? You hear a lot about this. Well, so, so right now this is still in the mice stage. I mean, when they gave the mice good bacteria, they swam longer. But I'll tell you my answer to that. More and more studies I predict over the next few years are going to show that when you've had an infection, especially when you've had antibiotics, you ought to take probiotics. And I also think they work well with irritable bowel syndrome. If you have a problem regulating your bowels, I think probiotics are great. You have to ask your doctor which one to take. There's a lot of different ones on the market. Or if you're going to the hospital and you're about to have some sort of a Absolutely. procedure a couple of weeks before you want to build up your good mm. bacteria since you're going to be heading toward IV antibiotics and infections. Right.